Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. Let's talk about Stone Age orthodontics. And this is a term I like to use because there's a lot of orthodontists out there or people doing orthodontics that are still practicing it really old school. And I really would love for you to go back about five or six videos in my video list. It was probably what was posted last week and take a look at a video. You can even probably search for it by keyword or by name, something about how to tell if your dentist is an airway dentist, or maybe just keyword is airway dentist or airway orthodontist. I think is actually the one I want. Look at those five bullet points. These are questions you should ask your screening orthodontist and see if they have an answer. If they get flustered or they don't have a quick answer, these, I mean, they should have an answer to these five questions in a heartbeat without even thinking. If they look challenged that you're even asking it, that should be a massive red flag to you that you have a Stone Age orthodontist. Um, Non-Stone Age orthodontists are focused on airway. They're focused on what the face is going to look like afterwards, the function is going to look like. They're not just trying to make the teeth and the bite fit together. That's old school. The other thing that non-Stone Age orthodontists will do is they'll do early, early, earlier in treatment. They'll catch things really early, like habits and airway issues at two, three, four, five, six. If an orthodontist is not willing to see a patient before age seven, that is a massive red flag. If you call and say, I have some concerns about my kid, they're five, can I come in? And they say, no, massive red flag, run away, don't walk, find somebody else, never go back to that doctor. They should be willing, I was willing to see a two-year-old, a three-year-old, I am probably not starting them at all, but I might put them on a recall. We might talk about behavior adjustments or adjustments that can be done at home for habits or airway or other referrals that might be needed or circle up with the pediatrician and put them on a, on a recall maybe for years, you know, just keep an eye on things. But just to say, no, I won't see them, mm -mm, no. So just wanted to create some awareness because I think a lot of you, especially pediatric dentists out there, reach out to me and you're like, you know, I had never planned to do ortho, but my referring orthodontist is just not cutting it. Patients are getting more aware. They are complaining. They're begging me to do this treatment, this phase one treatment, or even finish phase one and turn them into phase twos because they don't trust the doctor anymore because they are, they are aware of how things are changing. You know, or they're willing to watch and wait when there's obvious crowding, which is, in my opinion, never acceptable. I mean, sometimes it's no harm, no foul. Maybe it won't make a difference, but most of the time it's better to go ahead and get started. And at least the parent and the patient should be given options. So anyways, just want to keep creating awareness about this. And if you all want to learn more, I do have over 20 probably 2,800 pieces of content, 2,000 videos at least, um, adding them at least a few a week, almost every day. Um, and I take requests, so just let me know. But only thing I'm not gonna teach you about is anything surgical, because I believe that's outside the scope. And also, I don't even wanna put that stuff on the internet, forget it. You know, I don't want people doing DIY or anything like that. Um, anything surgical or exposures, really, I try to stay as much away from those as possible. So little content about that, um, jaw surgery, MARPIs, anything like that. Nope, mm -mm, not teaching that. Sorry. All right. Thanks.